Jehovah. voices to Jesus. You are the reason why we are gathered, Jehovah. like you to open your Bible to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Can we read it together? Romans chapter 8 verse 11. Let's go. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit that dwelleth in you. The supernatural. You can't be saying the supernatural like that. Say the supernatural. Now, the supernatural is immortality resting on mortality. The supernatural is the Holy Spirit resting on your mortal body. The supernatural is the lifestyle of the spiritual. The supernatural is the character of the spirit. The supernatural is the culture of divinity. The language of the terrestrial. Now the terrestrial is the heavenlies. So the language they speak in the heavenlies is what we call the supernatural. The supernatural is the uncommon outcome of intimacy with God. Can I repeat that? The supernatural is the uncommon outcome of intimacy with God. Now when your mortal body is quickened by the Holy Spirit... What you then produce is the supernatural. When your mortal body is quickened by the Holy Spirit, what you then produce is what? When your mortal body is quickened by the Holy Spirit, what you then produce is the supernatural. When you are intimate with God, when you are intimate with God, intimate with the Holy Spirit, the benefits and proof of that intimacy the benefits and proof of that intimacy is what we call the supernatural the supernatural is the product of mingling with the holy spirit mingling with the holy spirit now i don't know how many of you remember the bible where jesus was telling his disciples this kind goeth not out except by fasting and Except by fasting and except by fasting and prayer. But the original version, if you read it in the original version, is except by prayer. So fasting became a very important spiritual practice, so it was added to that verse. But the original version is prayer. Now, we all understand prayer as communication, which is what prayer is. Prayer is communication. But I want to talk about one thing that we all don't consider prayer as. Prayer is communion. Prayer is communion. Now, communion is not a, a regular word that we use every day, so I'm going to break it down. Communion is fellowship. Friendship. Fellowship with God. So when you hear me say mingling with the Holy Spirit, that's communion. That's communion. So what Jesus was trying to tell the disciples 
was this kind, goeth not out. Because you can't be telling me that the disciples didn't pray. You cannot tell me that after all they did, if all they did was what they saw Jesus did, they must have prayed. But they forgot the communion part of it. Jesus was trying to tell them, this kind goeth not out, not only by communication, but by communion. He was trying to tell them, I have something you don't have. He was trying to tell them, I have something you don't have. And that is relationship with the Father. Relationship. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Now prayer is not only communication. Prayer is what? Communion. And what is communion? Fellowship. 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 When you mingle with the Holy Spirit, there are certain characters you begin to exhibit. When you spend time in the presence of God, there are certain things you drop. Because you cannot leave the presence of God carrying burdens. You cannot leave the presence of God carrying load. He said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. When Jesus gives you his burden, every other burden has to fall off. So when you go into the presence of God, all your burdens, all your load drops down at the feet of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There are certain characters you start to exhibit. Certain dimensions you start producing. When you spend time in the place of prayer. When you spend time in the place of prayer. When you spend time fasting. How many of you have spent intentional time? Intentional time. Not for church. Not for a church program. Not for a meeting. You just take out three days and say, Jesus... I want to meet with you. You are not too small. You are not too small. Every single time you blink, the clock ticks by. If you want to leave your footprints on the sands of time, you need the supernatural. If you want to make positive impact that will change your generation, you need the supernatural. Hallelujah. When you are intimate with the Holy Spirit, the evidence and the product of that life, that private life with God, is the supernatural. I was listening to a pastor called Pastor Bree Davis recently, and she talked about the three S's. Tell your neighbor the three S's. The first S is silence. The second S is solitude. And the last S is stillness. How many of you have spent intentional time? And not my words, intentional, not forced. That is relationship. Intentional time in the presence of God. I want to meet with you. Jesus was telling the disciples, this thing that you are doing now, it does not go out by only communication. There is something you are missing. He was telling them, there is something you are missing. Communion with the Father. Communion with the Father. If you were in our breakout sessions today, you heard that we were talking about Jesus as our Father. It's one thing you need to put up here. Of course, He's King. Of course, He's Lord. Of course, He's a Creator. Of course, He's our amazing God, the Supreme Being. But first, He's your Father. If you see God as your Father, you will move in the realm of the supernatural. Seeing God as your Father intentional time in the presence of God. Tell your neighbor, intentional time in the presence of God. Say it one more time. Intentional time in the presence of God. If you look at David, Jesus, these were men that spent time. They took time apart. Solitude, no others, no people, just you and your Jesus. Just you and your Jesus. Intentional time. Tell your neighbor intentional time. I want you to write that down in all caps. Write it capital letter. Intentional time with God. Intentional time with God. Now I want to talk about the case of David. David would have never been able to defeat Goliath unless he spent solitude. Time in solitude. Killing the lion and the bear. 
he would have not been able to step out to do a supernatural thing using a sling and a stone to kill a nine feet giant except solitude tell your neighbor solitude solitude means no people no others it does not end with my head is a good head in church go back home I want to carry something I want to carry something I want to carry something. Hallelujah. They spend private time. Private time. I'm emphasized. I don't know why the Holy Spirit is making me emphasize on this intentional time. Just you and Jesus. Tell your neighbor, just you and Jesus. Because at the end of the day, in this life, this world now, as we are like this, it's still just you and Jesus. It's still just you and Jesus. Tell your neighbor it's just you and Jesus. Jesus Christ came to this world and lived a supernatural life. True or false? Jesus Christ came to this world and lived a supernatural life. Now, lastly, the supernatural is public display of private loyalty to God. The supernatural is the public display of private loyalty to God. Loyalty to God. Jesus Christ came to this world and lived a supernatural life. But you must understand one thing. You must understand that Jesus did not live a supernatural life until something happened. He was a teenager like you and I. He was a carpenter's son. He was 12. He was 13. Like my auntie was saying today in the... In the um, breakout session she was telling us that they did not lock jesus in one cage till he was 33 oh yeah come out come and manifest the supernatural he was 12 13 14 he came and experienced humanity the same temptations you go through the same things you went through and he still ex 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 um, exhibited the supernatural there is one thing that commands the supernatural tell your neighbor there is one thing that commands the supernatural like I said, Jesus was just the son of a carpenter. He was called a carpenter's son. From the, age of one, from the age of 1 to 30, yeah. From the age of 1 to 30. But at the age of 12, his passion began. At the age of 12, his passion began. He went to the temple. He went to where? The temple. This is your temple. This is your what? Your temple. He considered the presence of God as a holy place. Not a place to come and play. Not a place to come and be carried away. Not a place to come and be distracted. He considered it as a holy place. Hallelujah. The supernatural life begins with passion, number one. The supernatural life begins with passion. You cannot have passion for the supernatural and not receive the supernatural. The supernatural begins, the supernatural life begins with passion. If you read Matthew 2 and Luke 2, you will see where Jesus was 12 and he secluded himself. Remember what I said, solitude, intentional time. He secluded himself. Hallelujah. All the miracles Jesus did were supernatural. True or false? Feeding the 5,000. Feeding the 5,000 men. Men, not even including women and children. Feeding 5,000 men with five loaves, and five loaves of bread and two fishes is supernatural. Hallelujah. Walking on water was supernatural. Opening of blind eyes, making the lame to walk. All those were supernatural. Healing the woman with the issue of blood was supernatural. That woman didn't trust Jesus. She didn't touch Jesus. She touched the hem of his garments. That's supernatural. That is what? Supernatural. He started at the age of 12. He started at the age of 12. Hallelujah. All those are supernatural hearts. But how did they happen? Tell your neighbor, how did they happen? Jesus Christ manifested at the age of 30. But his passion started at the age of 12. So the key 
to the supernatural. Number one is passion for God. Passion. Passion. I know I'm telling you to tell your neighbor things. I want you to echo it. So when you leave this place, you carry it with you in Jesus' name. Tell your neighbor, passion for God. Say it like an omega child. Say, passion for God. Many teenagers who think that when they grow old, when I grow up and get married, I will be serious. Let me tell you. They'll say, they'll say in fact, I'm still under my parents. My parents will stop me. Jesus was under his parents. Jesus, he had parents. When he came and lived like you and I in humanity, he had parents. He would say, they, dis they will disturb me. There will be distractions here and there. Now is the time. Tell your neighbor, now is the time. At the age of 12, he followed his parents to the temple. The parents left him while he focused on God. His parents, what? Left him while he focused on God. You must understand that you must know God for yourself. You must understand that you must know God for yourself. The two minutes, the three minutes, the one hour, two hours you spend in the presence of God is very important. It's very important. It's the God you know that makes you a source of honor to your parents. It's the God you know. It's the God you spend time with in the secret place that nobody sees. He said, go into your secret place, lock your door. That's where the supernatural is. Daddy preached a message. He said, carry to carry. Carry. It's in the presence of God. It's in secret place. It's in the secret place. For he that dwells where? In the secret place. Not in the public place. Not in the public place. In the secret place. Hallelujah. You must understand that you must know God for yourself. It's the God you know that makes you a source of honor to your parents. Jesus was a source of honor to his parents. There are times that you want to spend time with God that people will not understand. People will be confused. Some may even call you crazy. I bet back then some people might have been looking at Jesus. What is this one doing in the temple? Is it not that, that, that carpenter's son? There are times that you want to come to this altar and pray. People will not understand. I'm telling you from experience. There are times that you want to do some crazy things for Jesus and people are like, what's this one doing? But let me tell you something. It's the God you know that makes you a source of hope, a source of honor to your generation. Your world is waiting for you. You are a debtor. You owe your generation. You are a debtor, especially as a teenager. You owe your generation. You owe your generation. People might want to confuse you. Stay with God. Stick with this God. He will never leave you. His parents came casually. They just came casually. Because if his parents wanted to actually spend time not just hanging around the temple. If they wanted to spend time, they would have gone into the temple with Jesus. His parents went casually. But Jesus had purpose. Passion begins before purpose. You have to have that passion. Passion for God to fulfill your purpose. There are many teenagers who come to church casually. Casually. Some don't even come with their Bibles. Some don't even come with their pen, their notes. They came because, oh, I want to I mean, make new friends. Oh, that gave for my secondary school. That, yeah. I heard that she's going to a teenage conference. Let's go and gist. It doesn't work like that. You need intentional time. When, but when we started the publicity for teens conference, I went to do the secret place. I said, God, give me a word for this things conference. And the Holy Spirit told me more than one word, more than one word. He told me a lot of things about this things conference. But if there's one thing I hold here, he told me there was going to be healing. And I believe it is going to happen here right now. 
the Holy Spirit told me there was going to be healing. And let me tell you, there are some dis-ease you don't see. There are some dis-ease that only Jesus can see. It's right here. Not just physical disease. Disease is anything that makes you lose your ease. Disease. Disease. And in your heart, you know, Lord, there is something. There is something I want you to lift from me. That is going to happen here today. In the name of Jesus. Jesus is going to set you free. Many don't even come with their Bibles. Like I said, some come because of one particular girl, one particular boy they want to hang out with. They want to gather around one place, me and my gang, me and my crew, my people. Let's make up for old times, all the times that we have not been seen together. Let's come and meet. When other people are crying, they are crying for the supernatural. They are pleading for the supernatural. Jesus had the opportunity. Like I said, he was 12, 13. He had the opportunity to follow his friends. He had the opportunity. But he said, no, there is something I want to carry. There is something I need that is not here. It's there in the presence of God. He moved with people that matter. He went to the elders. And the elders were like, who is this person? They were asking and answering questions. Move with people that matter. Tell your neighbor, move with people that matter. Only relate with people who know why they are in church. Who have a purpose of coming to the presence of God. Only relate with people who know why they are in church. Don't relate with people who came as visitors. Don't relate with people who came as visitors. Hallelujah. If you cannot find God among your mates, find God among your elders. That's what Jesus did. For Jesus to go to the elders, meaning there was no teenager in his time hungry for the supernatural. No teenager. For him to go to the elders. Are you telling me he did not see that brother? He did not see that. He left them. Because he said, it's not here, it's not here, it's there. In the presence of God. That's where the joy is. That's where the supernatural is. If you cannot find God among your age mates, look for him among those older than you. For, like I said, for Jesus to be relating with elders, it means in his time, in his time, there was nobody. Nobody of his age that, could he, that he could relate with. It's not compulsory that a teenager must be your friend. It's not compulsory. Look for that person that is on fire. Look from that person. Look for that person that you can draw from in times of need. You need to pray. You need to pray and tell God. A few seconds, bow your head. I feel led to do this. Say, Holy Spirit, help me to move with people that matter. Help me to move with people that are serious with passion. Serious with passion for God. Hallelujah. The only people that deserve your attention and friendship are those who can answer the questions of your life. The only people that deserve your attention, that deserve your friendship. Jesus knows. Jesus knows. He knows why he went to meet the elders. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. He was seeking for answers. Jesus was what? Seeking for answers. And the answer I cannot get here among my age mates. I will get it to my elders. Look for that person. 
If you are poor, look for your Silas. Look for your Silas. The Bible says they were praying, they were praising, they were worshiping God. And suddenly, in the prison, the foundations were shaking. Not just the prison, the foundations. And every other person's chains were loosed. When God uses you, it's not only for yourself. When God uses you, your impact spread. When God uses you, your impact what? Spreads. There are questions as a teenager you need to be asking. Not what is trending. Not what is the new uh, 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 um, football team. No, no, not what is the hit dance move. Not what is the hit thing. There are questions. Serious life questions you need to be asking. Number one, passion drives you to want to know God. Number two, passion drives you to seek for answers. How can God use me? How can I be a blessing to my generation? How can I make impacts? How can I leave my footprints on the sand of time? Seek for answers. Passion drives you to seek for answers. That's one thing passion drives you to do. How can I take away this embargo for my family? Seek for answers. Seek for answers. And until you find answers, you are not leaving. So in this team camp meeting, this team's camp meeting, 2022, seek for answers. Seek for answers. Hallelujah. You have to become the answer to your generation. You have to become. You are a debtor. You are seeking for answers. And it does, not have, it does not matter how far your parents have gone. If you have the answer, they will come back to you. Did they not come back to Jesus? Let's just imagine he was a problem child. They would have left him long gone and stayed there. Maybe a day, two days later. Oh, where is? Where is even? Where, where did he go? Hey, we left him here. But if you have the answers, his parents came back looking for him. Those helpers that you thought have gone, that person that God wants to use you to transform, they will come looking for you. They will come looking for you. That life that God has assigned you and ordained you to transform. Hallelujah. They came back to Jesus. Anybody who answers, who has answers from God, your generation will come back to you. Passion. Passion is what is missing today. It's what is missing. When you have passion, you will fast and fast and pray without noticing. You will fast, you will forget. You will forget. You ask, hey, I'm fasting. No? Passion. Passion. You do spiritual things that matter without even noticing. Two days, three days, your phone is off. You are not even aware. I'm seeking for answers. Seeking for answers. Seeking for answers. The generation that would answer to teenagers, this generation that we are in right now, will only answer to teenagers that have answers. This generation we are in presently will only answer to teenagers that have answers. So don't say you are too small. Don't say you are too young. Don't say they have gone ahead of me. How will I catch up? Start somewhere. Start somewhere. Start somewhere. Jesus was 12. And he sat down because he knew what he was doing in the temple. So the manifestation that happened at Terry began at the age of what? 12. Because of passion. He was seeking for answers. Passion helps preparation. Passion what? Helps preparation. So every single time he secluded himself, he was preparing to manifest the move of God. He was preparing to show for the glory of his father. There are many people 
who prepare for their tomorrow today. As a teenager, prepare for your tomorrow today. Prepare for it. Passion. Passion. The second key to the supernatural is open heavens. Open heavens. When heaven opens, earth happens. Luke chapter 3 verse 21 to 22. Heaven only opens to those that are prepared for it. Only prepared heads receive doves. The dove landed on Jesus because he was a prepared vessel. Only prepared heads. Only prepared heads receive doves. A dove sat on Jesus. A dove from heaven sat on Jesus. Because his head was prepared. Only prepared heads receive fire. Act chapter 2. Fire fell on their heads. Your heaven can only be opened when you have the key. Nothing triggers the supernatural like open heavens. The Bible says, and a voice came from heaven. That's the verse 22 of Luke chapter 3. Luke 3, 22. A voice came from heaven. When you have open heavens, you command the voice of God. After the dove landed, a voice came. When you have open heavens, you command. You command the voice of God. You don't struggle for instruction when you hear God. One of the benefits of hearing the voice of God is that you don't make mistakes, especially as a teenager. You don't make mistakes when you hear God. There are people that hear God all the time because that's because they operate under open heavens. They have the key. The Bible says the Holy Spirit descended on him in a bodily form like a dove. So the second thing that opens heavens, apart from the voice of God, that you receive when your heavens are open. Number two, it comes on your body. Bodily, you experience it. You set apart yourself. Holy and acceptable. Romans 12, 1. You set yourself apart. I can't do that. I can't go there. It comes on your body. The dove descended on him in bodily form. It comes on your body. You are completely sold out to God. Your, your body is completely sold out to God. You can't think of sinning with that body because you know that is the temple of God, of the Holy Spirit. There are people who are struggling to live holy. There are people struggling to live holy. And that's because it has not come on their body. It has not dropped on their body. When your heavens open, the Holy Ghost comes on you bodily. You experience it bodily. 1 Corinthians 9.27, Romans 12.1-2, 2 Corinthians 6.14. As a teenager, your body, that's 2 Corinthians 6.14. Your body is a temple. Temple of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Ghost. So don't think that you can manifest the supernatural. Don't think that you can manifest the supernatural without giving your body to God, without being completely sold out. Don't think that you can manifest the supernatural without giving your body to God. Stand on your feet. I want you to say, Oh God, oh God, oh God, give me passion for you. Give me passion for you. Open your mouth and begin to pray right now. Lift up your hands. Holy Spirit, where is that teenager? Where is that boy? Where is that girl that wants to experience the supernatural? There are five of you. Five of you. Right now. Right now. Akamanamakapa. Holy Ghost. Pick them out. Pick them out. One by one. Ashaka palapa. Iroka palateba namanama. Take over. Spirit, take over. Take over. Jesus, take over. I cannot do. Unless you take over, I cannot see you as you are. Hey, yeah. Unless you take over, I cannot know you by myself. Unless you take over, I cannot know you by myself. No, no. Unless you take. 
you to be alert. It's going to come on you in bodily form right now. Right now. Right now. Lift up your hands. At the count of five, you are going to receive it like a mighty rushing wind. Somebody lift up your hands. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. One. Two.
spoken word. I want to pray for you. Come out. Come out. People that do spoken word, come out. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That is your instrument. That is your instrument. In the name of Jesus. Come out. In the name of Jesus. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit. They are life. They are spirit. They are life. They are spirit. They are life. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Blow. 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 By fire. By fire. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. From now. The words you speak are spirit and life. The words you speak are spirit and life. The words you speak are spirit and life. Holy Ghost. Take it. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Passion. Flow. Passion. One. Two. Three. Jump. Passion. Passion. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. That's fire. That's fire. Don't let you be separated. That's fire. Don't let you be secluded. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. There's one last thing that needs to happen, and that is surrender. 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 I was nothing until Jesus came into my life. Surrender. Now, if you know you are here, you are saying, Divine, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want this body to carry the fire. If you are here right now and you are saying, Jesus, save me. Jesus, save me. I want you to raise your hand. If you want Jesus to come into your life, if you want to accept him as your Lord and personal Savior, the Holy Spirit told me there are many that want to that, that will rededicate their lives to God. You might have gone astray, but if you want to rededicate your life, Jesus will accept you. Jesus will accept you. I want you to come out and hold your hands together. You can go on your knees. Take a heart posture. Take a heart posture. Don't look at me. Don't look at your friends. I want you to close your eyes and mean business with Jesus. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and mean business. Mean business. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid if you want to give your life to Jesus. Jesus can save you. I promise you. I promise. I promise you Jesus can save you. I promise you. This is my little walk I've spent with God. I, I, I've, I've come to understand that this Jesus does not live. Your father may have left you. Your mother may have left you. People may have abandoned you, but Jesus will not leave you. I don't want you to look at me. Close your eyes and tell Jesus what you want. This is a new life. This is a new life. This is a new encounter. Up to this point, Jesus has never failed me. If you are here, you are saying, Jesus, I don't want to listen to that song again. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Before I pray for these people in front of me, the Holy Spirit is telling me there are some people struggling with addictions. There are people that are struggling with addictions. There is that something, there's something you can't stop. Don't be afraid, please. That, that person telling you, that thing you are feeling, not to raise your hand, is the devil trying to stop you from your deliverance. Don't let him win. You are already victorious from the day Jesus died on the cross and said it is finished. 
you're already victorious. If you are here and you have an addiction, it might be one, it might be two. Don't be afraid. Jesus wants to save you. Raise your hand. Raise your hands. I'm seeing some hands are going down, going up. Don't be afraid. Raise it. Now is your deliverance. Now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree your people free. Amen. I decree your children, your teenagers free. Amen. Of every addiction. Oh. Of every addiction. Amen. Free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Few seconds, I want you to pray and tell God, this new life I'm about to start with you. Jesus, no going back. I don't want to go back. I want you to close your eyes and mean this prayer. This might be your first time you have ever prayed. You will learn it. Close your eyes. Bow your head. Jesus, I want to have a relationship with you. This prophecy I see. This miracle I see. This deliverance I see. I want to be a carrier. I want to carry. In Jesus' name. Amen. Repeat these words after me and mean them. Say, Jesus. I want to hear your voice to say, Jesus, I come to you today just as I am, the way that I am. I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my personal Savior. From today, I am born again. I am set free from everything holding me back to experience his, your miracle in my life I am set free Father thank you for your people thank you for your people thank you Jesus Jesus I lift up my two hands and surrender and say thank you I pray for these people I ask that forward never backward never in the name of Jesus Amen Forward ever, backward never in the name Amen. of Jesus. As you stand up from this place, now you stand up with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is telling me that many of you that have not spoken in tongues, you can't speak the heavenly language right now. It's going to drop on you. Hallelujah. Jesus is going to visit you. As you leave this place right now, live with his presence. Forward ever, backward never. Amen. You are set free in the name of Jesus. You are set free in the name of Jesus. Amen.